Hi friends, welcome back. Today we're going to do a little gardening. It's been requested that I do gardening videos. Um, I am still learning how to garden. This is my first time having a space where I can garden since living in the house where I grew up. So it's my first time really exploring gardening as an adult. So by no means am I an expert, but it has been requested that I share anyway. Today, all I'm doing is transplanting some herbs and veggies into some terracotta pots. They were in wicker pots before as like a holding zone, but wicker tends to rot when it stays wet, so terracotta is a bit better for these plants. I also never intended to keep them in the wicker pots. The wicker was just like a dollar, so it was a good option to get them out of their plastic pots when I bought them from the nursery. And the terracotta will be their more long-term home until my full raised garden bed arrives, which is coming in May. I thrifted these terracotta pots and the little ladder that you'll see them on from the thrift store. I'll overlay that right here. And the pots were from Italy, which I thought was so exciting. Oh, here you can see the roots from these tomato plant starts have gotten so long and they need a new home. So this is their new home temporarily. I know they're going to keep growing really fast, so I will get them into a larger pot soon, but for now, I am just putting them in here. Okay, while I pot this, I'm going to share a few things I've learned about gardening over the years from my grandma or sister or mom. They're all very um, good in the garden, so I'm still learning. One thing I remember learning is that after transplanting anything, you want to give it a bit of water. Um, I think it was my grandma who described it to me as they, like, you can be kind of rough with plants. You don't have to treat them like an infant baby, <laughs> but you still want to be kind of gentle. And after transplanting, it's as if they've undergone a surgery. So they might look a little more frail and you definitely want to give them water. Um, I've never fact-checked that. I just took that <laughs> with trust. A common thing that I think um, more people know these days is that you can feed your plants from the bottom up. So you can set them in a bathtub or another pot of water or just another vessel that has the water. And as long as your pot has a hole in it, they can soak up as much water as they need through the bottom. However, I'm not doing that here. I am setting my plants into a garden bed and watering them the old-fashioned way and that way the water can drip through and go back into the earth. Another thing I've learned that I haven't put into practice, well I kind of have, but is that there is a right and wrong way to prune things. So if you prune vegetables or herbs in the wrong place, they will likely not grow back. Similarly, there's a right and wrong way to prune rose bushes and rose trees. I pruned this one back a lot today because it was covered with these yellow leaves and black spotted spots on top of the leaves, kind of like that little one, but it was all over on this big one. And that can indicate a fungal infection with the tree, so I just gave it a nice trim and I really hope that it's okay. When you do prune, you want to cut above a stem with five leaves because that indicates that a bud will grow. I had to hit pause for the rest of that day, so we're back again today. New day, lots of sun and butterflies. And going to pick up where I left off with the repotting. Also going to do some weeding and I need to go get a few more flowers for some of these terracotta pots. I found that I really love terracotta pots and wood, like wood barrel pots the most, just because they really allow the plant and the flower to shine and they also allow for good drainage. So I'm putting a few 
plants that need better drainage into the terracotta pots like these pansies for example they're not doing too well so I'm going to put a hydrangea in the pot where the pansies currently are because hydrangeas love water oh I found a little piece of terracotta at the bottom of this pot so I was wondering what it was and <laughs> uncovering the treasure as I get the dirt out of here. Anyway, hydrangeas love water so I'm thinking hydrangeas will do a little bit better in this pot. It's not a big hydrangea, it's just like a single stem hydrangea plant and then the pansies I think will do a bit better with the terracotta pot since terracotta like moisture can escape the the material of terracotta a bit better than that other ceramic pot. These were the little pieces of terracotta that I found at the bottom of this pot that I thrifted and they kind of look just like junky but I think it'll be really cute to write the name of like herbs or whatever on them and then put them into the where the herbs are. One man's trash is another woman's treasure. As a new gardener, I think it's very fun and important to test and try and see what works in your space because just because someone says something online doesn't mean it's going to work in your space. So their garden, their climate, their conditions are going to be very different from yours most likely. Even like five minutes away from you could be a completely different scenario or even on the next block it could be a very different scenario of climate or um, just conditions because the way the sun and the clouds and the rain hits your garden is going to be very different from somebody else's. So while there is a plethora of information out there and it's very helpful to learn from, I do think it's important to just try things out and figure it out for yourself and figure it out for your space and the best way to learn is by doing, in my opinion. So I'm not always going to do everything correctly on the first try or the second try or the third try, but hopefully by the fourth try, I will learn and I will get it correct. I think there's kind of a metaphor in there of learning and growing just like the plants do. Anyway, if you see me doing something here that you know doesn't work across the board, like maybe this pot is way too small for pansies and you are a viewer watching this like, oh my god, girl, your pansies need more room to breathe, please do leave a comment. Um, I would love to learn from you. I think feedback online is a tricky subject because when people are sharing something about themselves, whether it's their home or an outfit or whatever, and people give unsolicited advice and they're like, oh, that picture frame would actually look better if you moved it to the other wall. And the person is like, wait, but I like it here. Like, I didn't even ask. I don't want feedback. I like it here. Like, it becomes tricky because sometimes it's like, wait, that's a great idea. And sometimes it's like, but... I like it here. I don't need your comment. I don't need feedback. And so I personally like to say, like when I am looking for feedback, I'll say all advice is welcome. Please leave a comment if you have any ideas. But if I'm not looking for feedback, I typically don't end a video with what do you think because I think that opens it up for people to like start being kind of hateful in the comments. And not all feedback is hateful especially when feedback is done correctly and it's more of a community moment than a tearing someone down moment and so with all of these gardening videos i leave it to say please do give feedback but when you are giving feedback please be kind i would love for this to be like a community building um, learning together sort of space and not a I know everything you know nothing what the hell are you doing kind of situation. I think the internet can be such an amazing place to learn and grow and meet great like-minded people however it can also be a really scary space to post on just because a lot of people can be really um hurtful. Anyway back to the plants this plant here um I didn't know what it was so I looked it up this morning and it is a um, common weed according to the internet it will produce little flowers so I kept some however it was kind of taking over the garden so I wanted to weed it back a little bit today 
And this is my failed lettuce <laughs> garden or lettuce bed. Um, they I didn't cut it soon enough and it shot up flowers. This is my arugula, still doing okay. Um, I'm just going to leave the flowers because I kind of think they're pretty. And then when my garden bed or my raised garden bed arrives in May, I'm going to just start over with the greens and veggies and put a little bit more research into how to keep them alive longer and just be really bountiful. A little hack I have come to learn for myself is you can totally use your gloves as um, knee pads if you don't have knee pads or um, if you're in a pinch. I bet everybody does that who gardens but I have just come to learn that myself so I'm sharing that little tip with you guys. Also, this is another common knowledge um, tip, but in case there's somebody out there who doesn't know it, when you're weeding, you want to pull up from the base of the weed so that you get the full root, because if you don't get the full root, it's just going to grow back. Like, if you just cut it, it's not going to actually get the weed out. You have to get the full root out in order to make sure it doesn't grow back. At this point, I decided to put my gloves on just because I was reaching way underneath the lavender bush and the lavender bush has some pokey roots and I already got one splinter and I really didn't want to get more, so gloves are going on. I usually don't wear my gloves though and I'm, like if I'm potting things especially, um, just because I don't mind getting my hands like filled with dirt. I actually kind of like the feeling of like being with the earth. However, if I think I'm gonna get splinters or cut, I'll throw them on. This is the garden after just a little bit of weeding. It just has a little bit more room for the other flowers to grow into. And I kept some of them, like I said, I was going to some of the weeds um, or quote unquote weeds. And then I accidentally cut some flowers as well when I was weeding. So I'm trimming up those flowers. So I'm just going to give them a 45 degree angle trim and take all the leaves off of the stem and then put them in a vase to have some cute little flowers in my home. These were some other rogue little flowers and I think I might press them. Another tip when pressing flowers, don't put them directly into a few pages of a book. Make sure you put parchment paper between the pages. Otherwise, the flower, the hydration, the water from the flowers can mold your book pretty much. I've had that happen to me before and it was such a heartbreaking moment. So don't make that mistake like me. Make sure you use parchment paper when you're pressing flowers. Also, it helps preserve the color of the flowers. So it's kind of a win-win. After cleaning up this little area, I'm going to weed a little bit more along the other side of the house. My landlord does have somebody that comes by occasionally to weed and trim um, the trees, but he hasn't come in a little while, so I'm going to just weed anyway. And I think he would use um, like spray to get rid of some of the weeds, and I've asked him not to use the spray in the the flower beds or the veggie beds but I think you'll see in the next few clips I think he would use spray along the other weeds just because they're between tiles and they're really hard to pull up the roots but until he comes I'm just going to do my best to pull them out of the tile okay another random tip is when you turn the hose off make sure to keep running the water until all the water comes out of the hose that way the water isn't sitting in the hose and I think it's just to like protect the hose and make sure like nothing starts growing in it I'm actually not sure why I do that I just remember my dad telling me that when I was really little and so I still do that as you can see, um, it's really hard to pull these weeds out between the tile. I'm getting some of them all the way down to the roots, but some of them I'm just getting the leaves because they're so tightly packed in there. And that's why um, I think it'll be helpful when the my landlord's gardener comes by whenever he is going to come by and just put some spray between those tiles. I would be interested to hear if anybody knows of like a more natural spray, like maybe vinegar or something like that, that I could put down in the meantime, um, or instead of using like a chemical spray that would make the 
um, prevent the weeds from going in between the tile um, because I always would love to do something that's like a little bit more um, planet friendly than using chemicals. I also think it's so interesting like who decides what a weed is and what a weed isn't. Like why do we think that some plants that are naturally growing shouldn't be there. I just think it's so interesting that we've collectively collectively decided like, oh yeah, that's a weed. We need to get rid of that. I think it's such an interesting, I don't know, interesting societal phenomena. But among the weeds or quote unquote weeds, I found a little flower, a little pansy. I don't know how she got in there, but I am totally keeping her there. I had a pause in the day to go to the nursery and pick up some more flowers and also some veggie starts, which I'm not going to get to today. I'm waiting for my veggie garden bed to arrive, so I'll do that another time. But I picked up this really pretty flower that I'm going to put in the last big terracotta pot. One tip I learned when you take pots out of the plastic thing they come in is to kind of scrunch up and loosen up their... Um, roots that way it just encourages them to kind of like grow and spread their roots in new ways and not be confined to their packaging also one way my grandma taught me to measure if your plant is watered is to water them until it comes out of the bottom which I don't know if that's true or not but she taught me that a while ago so I kind of go off of that if I'm not doing the water from the bottom method and the very last thing we're planting today is some basil for this smaller pot. This pot, I think, retains water, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on it and make sure that this basil stays healthy because I would love to have fresh basil right outside of my door for cooking. I also wanted to make sure that I got an herb that wanted full sun, and apparently basil likes a lot of sun so hopefully this will do well because the last few plants i've had in this pot have not been doing well which is such a bummer because it is such a cute pot and it could totally be the location that i have it in just didn't do well with the plants that i had in it previously so fingers crossed that this basil thrives in its new home and that's kind of it for today this was my first garden video. Well, I guess second because the first one was getting the side house garden that you just saw set up. I guess this is my second, but it's my first like potting and sharing tips kind of video. If you liked this format of just like sharing what I'm doing slash tips I've learned over the years, let me know. Or if you have a different format in mind that you've seen other people do that you really like, also let me know. I am down to adapt to what people enjoy. That's it. Bye!